So obviously it's February and we are now looking at celebrating and learning throughout the month in honor of Black history. At first I was thinking of simply doing a Black History Month episode, but I feel that I've already spoken on that quite a bit in the Mimosas with Moms episode that I am in, and you can actually find the link to that episode in the show notes today and on our website. So if you're interested in listening to some of my struggles as a black mom growing up in mostly white suburbia, you can hear it there. During that talk and upon listening back though, I was reminded of an issue that not only plagues people of color, though it does in a huge way, but it plagues all of us in different ways. And obviously, because this is that kind of podcast for parents, we'll be talking about it in terms of parenting, but I definitely want us to think about how it applies in our everyday life. And that problem is our inability to admit that we are invalid sometimes, that our opinions don't always have a place, and that we don't, in fact, know everything about everyone. My name is Ariana Bradford, and this is the Niam Project Podcast. everyone, what's up? As I've mentioned, I am Ariana Bradford, and you are listening to the Niam Project podcast, and this is episode three of season two, It's Okay Not to Know. So I've wanted to speak on this for quite a while, and I haven't quite known how to approach it. And finally, I decided that today is the day. Just a heads up, this is just a solo episode today, so if you were looking for any well-written articles or expert opinions outside of mine, probably best for you to wait till the next episode. Otherwise, this all comes from a personal place and from watching others. And probably the best way to start this, as I always like to, is with a story. So, as most of you know, I am very, very active on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook to a degree. And on Instagram, one day, a very good friend of mine, whose name I won't mention because I don't want her getting any more crap from anyone else, posted out of frustration about how hard being a parent is. She had just finished going through a horrible bout of the stomach flu while pregnant with multiple children under the age of four. Her post was basically saying that until you have been through that kind of weekend, you just don't understand what it's like. And that regardless of how many pets you have or nieces you have, though I think she may have just focused on pet parents, that you just don't know what it's like unless you go through it. And right, wrong, or indifferent, whether you agree with her feelings on dogs being just like people or cats being just like people, regardless of where you stand on that particular issue, I think we can all agree, logically, that dogs and people are different. That's just the truth. There are, no matter how many similarities there are, there are countless differences as well. And as a person who does not have any pets at this particular moment, I can absolutely say 
that I do not understand what it's like to be a pet parent. And I'm okay with that. I don't think that one is better than the other. I don't think that one has it harder than the other, necessarily. I think everything is hard for everyone in different ways. But I do say that the two are different and that I would never try to tell a parent of multiple pets what it was like to live their lives. And if they were to tell me up front, Ariana, you don't know what it's like to have three dogs waking you up in the middle of the night to take them outside to go to the bathroom. I would absolutely agree. So you would think that on this post that my friend had made, that whether people agreed or disagreed, the one thing that they could agree on, whether they had multiple dogs or multiple children, would be that unless they had gone through that particular situation that my friend had gone through, they could not possibly know what it was like. And that raising dogs or cats would just not be the same. It just wouldn't be the same. Not harder, not easier, just not the same. But I guess I'm hoping for too much because that's not what happened. Instead, my poor friend wound up having to turn off comments on her Instagram page. She wound up having to take her post down and she wound up having to essentially wait for the ire to die down because multiple parents of pets and multiple parents of one child or two children were attacking her telling her that they they did in fact have it hard and that she couldn't possibly mean that because that's just judgmental and rude and that it was assumptive and people with puppies were arguing that of course they know what it's like to have multiple children that you have to take care of while you're throwing up yourself because they have dogs which just isn't right again not because of them having necessarily a better life or a worse life, but because it's just not the same. And my friend handled it probably with the amount of aplomb that I could honestly say I would not have had. She didn't really argue with anybody. She didn't even really let it ruin her day. She just kind of handled it and moved on. But that stuck with me. And it stuck with me because I came to realize that this is just a problem we all have. We're not okay with admitting you're right. I don't know what that's like. We're not okay with stepping back and letting people who can relate speak. And you're probably sitting there saying, mm, okay, what does this have to do with Black History Month again? And I can honestly say, coming from a perspective of a person who is of a skin that is not white, this is exactly what people do to us too. I can tell people, for example, that I feel awkward when I walk into a store and I see somebody watching me to make sure that I'm not stealing anything. And instead of saying, I can't possibly know what that's like, I totally and completely get where, where the pain is coming from, but I could never really relate to that. I often have people trying to agree and in some places connect. So there's mostly a benevolent reason. But most people try to liken things that are not the same to my situation. They'll say, oh, I, I know exactly what you mean. I tried to return a dress one day and I didn't have the receipt and you should have seen the way they were looking at me. And you, in those situations, you don't want to be rude, right? You don't want to invalidate that person by saying, well, yeah, that, that frustration isn't real. But you also kind of want to just sit back and say, hey, listen, 
I understand that that was a strange kind of frustration, but it's not the same kind of frustration as walking into a place and having someone assume because of your body color <laughs> that you are interested in doing something illegal. You're not allowed to tell people that their situations are not the same as yours. Probably never, but especially in this day and age, because everybody wants to believe that what they're going through is valid. And somehow we have turned validity into a competition. And granted, I see this everywhere, but I especially feel that I see this amongst parents and amongst people who have kids and people who don't. For some reason, we are not allowed to say, you don't understand what I'm going through. We're not allowed to agree with that outlook. We're not allowing ourselves to say, you know what? You're right. I don't know what it's like to have children. I, I could never truly understand where you're coming from. But I know what sleep deprivation is feels like so i can connect with you on that level but i know what it's like to be wrung out at the end of a week or a day or an hour i know what those things are like so we can connect on those levels but it's okay for me to say that i don't know what it's like to raise children we don't allow ourselves to say that we don't allow ourselves to admit that we don't know different parenting situations. I 100% I and, and frankly, I'm glad because I don't think I have the patience. I 100% will admit that I don't know what it's like to have twins. I don't. I can't pretend I have two children, but my children are different ages. One of them is now in kindergarten. I don't have to worry at all about making sure that they're both growing up at the exact same pace or level. I didn't have to birth them at the same time. I didn't have to see what it was like to breastfeed them or raise them at the exact same time. So if a mother with twins wanted to tell me that I don't know what it's like to have twins, she is 100% correct, and I'm not going to argue with her. But we do that to each other. We do that to each other about parenting. We do it about race. We do it about socioeconomic status. And it's frustrating me. <laughs> and I don't know if it frustrates anyone else out there. And maybe in that case, this episode is all for naught, but... I am hoping that that's not the case. I am truly hoping that there are others out there who also find it troubling that we care as much as we do about matching everyone else in their supposed validity. And I think I've told you before that I feel that a great, great part of this comes from our assumption that suffering is what makes us real. It makes us valid. It makes it so that we have earned our place in the sun, so to speak. We fear that if someone else is able to speak on an experience or on a feeling that we cannot connect with, then we are not as valid as they are because they are mentioning a suffering that we have not gone through. And I've already made it quite clear, first off, that I hate that shit. I hate that outlook. Suffering is not a measure of a human being. It's really not a measure of anything. It's just kind of part of life. And it sucks. And we shouldn't want to measure ourselves by how much of it we've been through. That is not something we should want to do. But I do feel that there are validities 
to everyone's suffering. And I do feel that instead of trying to take that away from people so that we can feel as if we've somehow moved forward in this marathon that we call life, we should be allowing people to have their experiences without feeling like we have to somehow be a part of them. Like another example coming from my place as a woman of color. And we're going to focus mainly on the woman part now. Being a woman, and I'm sure many moms out there would agree, there are so many times that we talk about how important it is to support female businesses. And we talk about these things because it's a struggle for a lot of female businesses out there. We, we just aren't taken as seriously. We are shamed more often than not for actually wanting to be paid what we're worth. It's a struggle. And especially when you have children, it's a struggle because a lot of people consider children to be a show of unprofessionalism, especially if they're acting like children. And uh, that's just not fair, especially when you are the main caretaker or the sole caretaker of a child. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen a friend or associate post online about how important it is to make sure that you support a female business, give a female business owner some support. Women-owned businesses are just as important. And then a male business owner will come in and say, um, we have struggles too. It's hard for us too. I'm going to tell you right now, it is, it is so difficult for us to meet the numbers we need to meet or to have foot traffic. It's just as hard. It's just as hard. And it's amazing how hard it is to get these people to understand that you can't know that it's just as hard. You can't. Unless you are a female business owner or a mother business owner or a single mother business owner actually going through the day-to-day -day life, you can't possibly know how hard it is or isn't. And the truth is, it's so clear in those moments that this does not come from a place of truly feeling that things are uneven. It's a fear of being told that their struggles don't matter as much as someone else's. And we really need to quit doing that. We all do this, and it's something that we all need to stop. The fact that you have one child doesn't change the fact that you have struggles. It doesn't change the fact that you need breaks. It doesn't change the fact that you're tired sometimes and that you are disgusted sometimes with parenthood. And it doesn't change the fact that you need to still take care of yourself. But it also doesn't mean that a mother who says that she is tired with two children is not allowed to say that she's exhausted and that you wouldn't understand what it's like to be exhausted chasing around two kids because you don't. And that is okay. Now, I don't really think that everybody's going to listen to me on this. A lot of people, I think, are going to probably brush this off and say, well, I, I totally get it, but I often feel like people are trying to tell me that they're better than me, Ariana. Somebody trying to tell me that I couldn't possibly know what it's like to have to run a family of four just because it's me and just my child and my husband, it just, it makes me so angry. They can't possibly understand what it's like to be me either. What about me? What about me? What about me? Other people's existence does not wipe out your existence. Other people's struggles don't wipe yours out. All that this means is that you have a new outlook and a new understanding to come to. All that that means is that you don't have to talk. You get to keep your mouth shut and listen. You get to learn a lesson you wouldn't otherwise have learned. This is an honor. It's, it's part of what makes things interesting. It does not mean 
that you are less than simply because you don't understand. And that's another thing. Saying that we don't understand sometimes gets scary, right? It gets terrifying because we're sitting here thinking, uh, okay, so saying that I don't understand, isn't that admitting that I'm dumb or ignorant? And my answer to that is yes, uh, but that's okay because we're all ignorant about something. Like, I can sit here and I can tell you what it's like to grow up as a black Hispanic mom in white suburbs and to be married to a white man with biracial children or multiracial children, really. But if you were to start asking me questions, and this has happened, by the way, if people were to start asking me questions about what it was like to grow up in the ghetto, their exact words, I'm not going to know what A that means and b what that's like i don't know and i'm not going to pretend i know just to sound like i deserve to be where i'm at i simply deserve to be where i'm at because that's where i am right now and that's what we all need to take inward and that's what we need to hold on to you deserve to be where you are right now because that's where you are right now and if that is a person who has three kids or a person who has no kids or a person who has one kid or you know a, a single mom who has really risen above the ranks or who is struggling not to say that you deserve those struggles but you are where you are because of the struggles you've been through. And nobody can take that away from you just by saying that their struggles are different. So I guess what I'm saying here is I am tired of watching friends of mine, other content creators, other writers, fearing pointing out differences because they're afraid that they're going to be inundated with people who are butthurt because they feel personally as if we should have just included them for the sake of being inclusive. I, I don't think that that's fair. I don't think that you would find it fair if it was a situation that was unique to you and a group just like you. I think that if the situation was turned around, you would want people to shut up and listen. And I think that we need to learn to shut up and listen. Because here's the thing, everyone. Life is not all inclusive. It's just not. It doesn't include everyone and everything. Otherwise, we would all be billionaires. That's just not how it works. So the next time that you see a post that you don't identify with, it's okay to admit that you don't identify with it. And if you have to look at it any other way, Look at it as if you are trying to teach your children that they don't lose out by not being a part of everything. You're teaching your kids that there are different people in this world who have different situations and different stories and different ideas and that their job is not to keep up with these people or to prove that they are as good as these people but it is to understand that they are good on their own merit and that these people have things to teach them. And so I guess that's it. It's kind of a short episode today. And for those of you who were expecting a full 30 to 45 minutes, I do apologize. Um, not really sure how long you guys wanted me to rant for, but I do hope that perhaps for those of you who have found that you struggle 
when you you see things that just trigger you in a negative way and I don't want you to think that I'm using the word trigger in the condescending kind of half-assed way that a lot of people do where they generally mean it as an insult calling you oversensitive I don't mean that at all I mean that it truly does trigger something in you and it it causes an anger or frustration that you just weren't expecting to feel and I have posts like that I I 100% will tell you right now I have scrolled through social media and seen a post that turns into a two-hour rant sesh at my husband not quite with him um, it usually ends with him kind of uh-huh and mm-hmming while he's trying to get away from me I get it I get that those things anger you but those posts weren't for you they weren't for you they were for the people who understand who identify and those people whether you agree or not, they, they have a right to talk. As long as they are not hurting anyone, as long as they are not brigading anyone or trying to cause pain for others, they have a right to talk. And so my suggestion to you is when you run into those triggering moments where you feel like you must say something, don't. Talk about it behind, talk shit behind this person's back to your best friend Talk about how terrible they are, get it off your chest, but don't rile yourself up or in some cases possibly hurt another person simply because you disagree. It's not your place to do and it doesn't change anything. And I can hear some people right now saying, you know, oh, Ariana, so what? So, so, so I'm supposed to just keep my mouth shut if someone's saying something racist or horrible or mean? And my answer to that is, no, you're not, if you're in person and if what you're saying is going to make a difference. If you consider arguing with someone on Twitter or Facebook or wherever the hell you're at, where there's a computer screen in between your faces, where the person has no fear due to anonymity, and you're wasting your time telling yourself that you are doing something helpful for people like me by arguing online with a person, you're not. You're basically giving yourself a feeling as if you're doing something helpful, but you're not. So I don't think that you should keep your mouth shut if someone is talking about their experience and they are a part of your particular friend group. Then you guys are in person and this person is talking about how, I don't know, all black people don't tip. I absolutely think that you should say something. But most times I've found that we are so much less vocal in person. And so I think that that's also a question that perhaps you should be asking yourself. If you are really riled up about these kinds of things, but you don't find yourself speaking out when it truly matters, when it can truly make a difference, perhaps the problem isn't so much that you want to change things, and perhaps it's an issue that we should be looking at within. All of that to say that I want you to speak out when it makes a difference. I want you to be aware of what bothers you and what doesn't. And I want you to value your own experiences for what they are, not how they compare to others. And I know that this is a utopian ideal and that most people won't and that arguments are going to continue and people are going to continue feeling like they must be less than because they can't understand one another. But if even one of you out there realizes that what you have going is just as good, even if it's not exactly the same, then I'm happy that I've done what I've done today. And that's it on this. Um, just a little bit of an update on the book. The book is entitled Shame on You, Big Truths from a Bad Mom. And 
as of now, it is slated to release on April 21st, 2020, and I will be giving you guys more updates on that as events warrant. So if you are interested in reading a swear-filled, ranty, commiseration piece book that lets you know that you are not alone in really much of anything, then definitely keep listening out for that. And other than that, the Nyan Project podcast is written and produced by me, Ariana Bradford. You can find out more about us at wearenyam.com and or you can check us out on social media under the name The Nyan Project. Thank you so much for listening to us today, and we will see you the same time next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>